In pursuit of better efficiency, jet engine manufacturers like Rolls-Royce are constantly searching for materials that will enable their engines to run at higher temperatures more quietly and give out more power. I met Dave Rugg, material specialist for Rolls-Royce, under an enormous Trent jet engine to find out what happens once a new material is made. The first thing that we have to consider is what we're actually going to use the material for. And the key things there are really the load regimes that it's going to be subject to. So is it going to be high temperatures, it's going to be high fatigue loading. And also how we would actually go about manufacturing it in a cost-effective way, or indeed if it's manufacturable at all at real end scales. So what sorts of properties are you looking for? Say if you need to make a turbine blade, what do you need that metal to do? There's a very wide range of loads that the materials are subject to. Uh, For turbine blades, obviously one of the key things is how the material behaves at very high temperatures. So there we'd be looking at creep behaviour, which is basically the material stretching under load at high temperatures. But also there's a lot of other loading that the material is subject to. So that can be things like fatigue loading because of the, the centrifugally induced stress, but also gas loads because the blade's having to do a lot of work or extract a lot of work from the airflow. Now, we are next to a Rolls-Royce Trent engine. How many different materials go into making something like that? We've got hundreds of different materials and product forms that go into an engine. Um, In terms of the main alloys, we're probably in the order of um, low tens, uh, but lots of different product forms that all have different mechanical properties associated with them.